Some other things you guys have to write for me when you know the angles, sorry, triangles are congruent, it's called a congruency statement, right? This expresses, and then verbally say it for you, it expresses that triangles are congruent. Expresses that triangles are congruent. There's a little bit more that I'm going to have you guys write as well. But essentially, a congruency statement just says that triangle blah 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 is congruent to triangle blah blah blah. Right? Now, the way that you write this is where the details are super important. So, I'm going to start a parenthetical expression here. You can't just randomly name the triangle however you want to. The order is very specific. So the order is according to corresponding vertices. Vertices being the plural of vertex. So the order is according to corresponding vertices. I'm going to explain what I mean by that unless we start getting into the What? What sides are corresponding to what? Okay, we'll get into it. Hold on. So I'm going to ask you guys to name angles, sides, and triangles, but the order is very important. So let me show you what I mean by that. There are three examples here. This first one is simpler because we're not touching. When the two triangles are sharing a side, it makes it a little more complicated, but we'll get to that in a second. Take a look at this picture. What would C be equal to? Any other thing? How do you know that it was congruent to D? It's supposed to be a D. There we go. Because this one has the three little arcs, right? This one also has the three little arcs. The number of marks that they make shows you which ones are corresponding. What about T? What would T be congruent to? G. G. So those have single little arcs there. What about S? L. L. So you can see just by the markings in the picture, it's going to tell you what's congruent. And what about segment CT? DG. Now, this is where the details come in, right? I could not have written that as GD, right? DG and GD are the exact same segments, but you have to specifically name it DG because that's the order that they use over here. They went from C, the vertex with three marks, to T, the vertex with one mark. So you have to mimic that in the other triangle. That's what I mean by using the same order according to the corresponding vertices. What about TS? TS goes from the single mark to the double mark. GL. SC goes from the double mark to the triple mark. So that's how you name angles and sides. Now we're going to do a full congruency statement, which is where you name the triangle. You name a triangle by the three points or the three letters on the vertices. So you get to pick whichever triangle you would like to start with, and you get to pick however you want to name the first one. So do you want to start with the one on the left or the right? The left. How would you like to name that one? CTS is the one I heard loudest. But this is for personal preference for you guys when you're doing this on your own. You get to pick whichever triangle you want to start with and you get to name it however you want to. It's the second triangle that is now being dictated by how you named this one. All right? So when I write the name of the second triangle, I have to start with the corner, the vertex that corresponds with C. What corresponds with C in the other triangle? D. D. What corresponds with T? G. And then what corresponds with S? That's how you write a congruency statement. You set the foundation yourself, and then you have to match the order in the other triangle. Okay? This one's a little bit more complicated because these triangles are right up next to each other. Okay, so they're sharing a side. So you have to be very, very careful, especially since this corner is called K, but it serves two different purposes depending on which triangle you're in. So the first angle I'm going to find that's uh, congruent to is KGH, which goes from the double mark to the single mark to the triple mark in the first triangle. So single, sorry, double, single, triple. How do I mimic that over here? Goes from the double to the single to the triple. Double, single, triple. So in the other triangle, the one on the bottom, you would go from H to J to K. <coughs> Using the markings to guide me. 
right? The next one over is going from G to K to H, which is single, double, triple. How do I do that in the bottom triangle? J, H, K. Does everyone understand how I'm using the symbols to help me? All right, what about K, H, G, which is double, triple, single? H, K, J. Everybody with me so far? Yeah, the, 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 the number of the little Yeah, okay. And you see I'm kind of like mapping, but if I go from K to H to G, K to H to G is from the double to the triple to the triple. Yeah, because the K first, those two are different. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Definitely. Um, so, what if you have like a third angle you you would be incorrect. It would not be correct. That's a totally different angle if you switch the letters. All right, what about GH? Oh, sorry. GH goes from single to triple. So if you do that down here, it's JK. What about the next one? Follow along, everybody. What about the last one? Yeah. All right. So make sure you're careful looking at the uh, picture to decide how to name it. All right. Somebody pick one triangle and name it for me. H. I heard HJK, which is a triangle on the bottom. I'm going to say that these two triangles are congruent to each other because they are, right? All, everything about these triangles are congruent to each other, so the full triangle is congruent. So if I start with the bottom triangle and I call it HJK, how would I name the upper triangle correctly in the same order? K, G, K, H. K, start with K, then K, G, B. Alright. Is everybody picking up what I'm putting down so far? All right, I'm going to reverse this now. Instead of giving you the picture and then having you guys find the congruency statement, I'm going the other way around. I'm giving you the congruency statement, and I want to know what all the corresponding parts are. This is actually very simple. The name tells you everything. The name is set up the way that it needs to be to show you what's corresponding to what. So if A is the first letter, what would A correspond to in the other triangle? Uh, F. Okay. B would correspond to? E and C would correspond to D. They set up the name that way. Whatever you see in the name, you can rest assured that all those pieces are going to be corresponding. That's why they write it for us. All right, segment AB would correspond to what? FE, -E. based on the name. BC, ED, and then AC, or sorry, CA. Yeah. So you just look at the name and write everything in the order that you see and you're good to go. Right? Everybody good with that? Okay. Next up is using congruent figures to solve. So if they tell you that the figures are congruent, you can assume that every corresponding piece, they're equal to each other. Okay? So I'm trying to find x. 2x is referring to this angle right here, angle u. Alright? I see that over here in the name. What does u correspond with? D. So what do I know about U and D? They're congruent. Unfortunately, in this diagram, I don't have anything written for that angle. So you're going to have to do a side problem to find out what D is first in order to solve it. So how can I solve for D in this picture? Okay. I have two parallel lines right here. Remember when you guys see parallel lines, go ahead and highlight those, right? It's their strategy. I have two parallel lines. Which transversal do I want to use? DC. So if I draw this, I'm obviously not using the 85 anymore. I'm just using the 90 degree angle. These two angles are consecutive interior. This D angle D and the 90 degree angle are consecutive interior. So what's the measure of angle D? Good. So what would the equation be for me to solve for X now? It would be 90 equals 2X because those two angles are equal. If this angle is 90, then that angle is also 90, but they've given us the expression 2x, so we set the equal. So what's the value of x? 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. Yeah. 
right? So sometimes they'll do that in the picture, the other piece that you need is missing. So you have to do a secondary question to find that before you can actually solve that. Oh, so it, the two X is for only used, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Great, same kind of deal over here. I know these two triangles are congruent. I'm trying to find the measure of A and the measure of B. So let's see if we can find A first. So A is involved with angle O. What does angle O correspond to in the other triangle? Y. Angle Y. You get that from the name. You can't always tell just by looking at it, and you should never assume by looking at it. Always use the name. So O and Y are congruent, so how would I solve for A? You set them equal to each other. If the triangles are congruent, then each part is going to be congruent as well. So those triangles are congruent to each other. When you solve, a is equal to 6. So what about the All right. Now, B is right here. I'm going to squiggle this one so we can see the difference. So angle X. What does angle X correspond to? N. N is right here. I don't have anything written there. So what do I do? Plug in 6. We're going to have to find n. This is a secondary question that we have to figure out first before we can answer the original question. I have to find n, and I'm going to use a to help me. I know that angle O is 38 by plugging it in. If I know this is 38 and this is 74, how do I find angle n? The triangle sum theory. All of them should add 180. So when you do that and then subtract, what do you get? All right, so again, you would do 38 plus 74, right, and then subtract that from 180 in order to get the measure of n. Now what do I do? Yep, 68 equals the other angle, and then you solve by subtracting 8 and dividing by 4. 60 divided by 4, 15. 15. 15. All right. You see how we did that? Everybody good so far? All right. What about this one? These quadrilateral things are congruent. I'm trying to find the value of x. How would I do so? X. What part of the shapes has an X? K, J, segment. What corresponds to K, J? A, B. Do you guys see how the figure has been twisted? Yes. Okay. So we have to depend on the name here to know what was congruent to what. So if those are congruent, what do I do? So what's x? Good. X is 3 when we do the algebra. How do I solve for y? Where's y? Look for it. Where's h? Oh, sorry, where's y? Angle h is right here. That has the y. What is corresponding to h in the other triangle? So what equation would I write? You set the, the corresponding parts equal to each other. Yes? Everybody's catching on how this works? Yes. All right, go ahead and do the last one on your own, please. Then I'll come back around and check to see if you got the right answer. Go ahead and do the last one on this page by yourself. We'll put the answer up in a few seconds. And then you can text if you did right.
opposite them are congruent. So the way that we're going to prove this is we're going to take a single isosceles triangle, right? I'm doing the um, one direction as a book. So I'm going to be proving that if two sides are congruent, the two angles are congruent. In order to do this proof, you have to add this segment here. So I'm adding that to the picture. So for this proof, I have this entire side filled out, and we're just going to figure out what the reasons are. So provided is that AC is equal to BC, hence the isosceles, Okay, so it's isosceles, so those are congruent. And then CD is the bisector of AB. So I added this in here to guide us through the proof. So, what is the uh, justification of this? Given. Given. The first two were given to me. All right, now I'm working off of this given right here. If I know that CD is the bisector of AB, can I put any markings in my picture? I can say that this segment was split in half, so those are congruent. So that's what I write here. DA is congruent to DB. How do I know that? Definition of bisect. Okay, cool. I also know that CD, CD is equal to CD. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. We're going to practice doing this in this unit. Oh, when you have something equal to itself, you're going to just pick another hash mark. I used three here because I've already used one and two. And just put the marking on there to show that it's equal to itself. How do I know that something's equal to itself? Now, this is something that you don't quite know yet. We're going to be practicing this more. So this is a little bit of a foreshadowing for what we're about to learn. I know that these triangles are congruent, even though I know nothing about the angles. Just by knowing the three sides are congruent to the three sides, I know that the full triangles are congruent. Right? We call this the side, side, side rule. Triple S. Wow. We'll be learning this more next time, but just as a little foreshadowing. Is there an H H H on the side side school or just that? No, you side you can read it. There's no H H H. All right, stop talking, please. I'm trying to finish. You guys have time to figure it out. But if you're gonna talk, okay, that's not gonna happen. Sit down, Brody. So again, this is foreshadowing. I know that the triangles are congruent just based on the fact that all three sides are equal to the corresponding sides in the other triangle. That's basically what side 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 stands for, right? Because I know that the triangles are congruent, then I know that the angles here and here are congruent. This is another foreshadowing. I'm going to use something called uh, CPCTC. CPCTC stands for Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. 
Again, this is foreshadowing. We have not been directed, so you guys have not been directed in how to do this yet. I'm just showing you how the things that we're going to be learning in this unit apply to help us with proofs. For example, the isosceles spacing goal here. Okay? So we're going to be learning how to use side, 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 and CPCTC a little bit later. Right? But this is why we know that if the two angles, sorry, the two sides are congruent, that the two angles are congruent. What is uh, or it should be on your reason, uh, reasons for the proof page. It stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And again, we'll learn that a little bit later. Finding the signs for proving the full triangle. It's not there. It's not there. We'll add it when we get it. Okay. All right. So just really quickly, let's recall how we use that to solve. So we've already practiced this, so let's try again. What do you guys notice immediately about this triangle? It is isosceles. So if two sides are congruent, what can you conclude? The two base angles are congruent. Now, if you guys are confused about which sides, or sorry, which angles to say are congruent, if you think about little arrows, if you draw little arrows across from the sides, whatever angles you're pointing at, those are the ones that are congruent. So if you think of like a crisscross drawing arrows, same thing for the angles. If you draw little arrows, those are the ones that are congruent. Okay? So if I know that these are congruent to each other, what can I write for this angle? X, X minus four. four. I can write another X minus four. How can I use that to help me solve? Add them together, so I equal to 180. 180. Wow, that is so helpful. It's working enough. All right, so this is the equation you guys would solve. What would you get? I don't even know. Forty-five. Forty-six. Forty-six. Forty-six point five. Why should have to be just? Why can't it just be a? All right. Everybody, go with that one. Okay, moving on. What about this one? What do you notice? Okay. But I know I don't have the symbols, but they're still considered congruent because they're congruent values. So if I have two congruent angles, I have five congruent sides. But which two? Four X minus three. These two. Yeah. All right. That extra fifteen and the extra forty degree angle are not necessary. So you guys should get. Let's get the first one. Okay. How do you want to three? Seven. Three. 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 That's equilateral. All right, we can still bring equilateral in here. Does it matter which two sides you guys use? No. no. So pick your favorite two. Yeah. I want to make a point about this question. You guys can pick any two sides you want. You'll get the same answer. You might be alarmed that the answer is negative, and you should be. Anytime you guys get a negative answer when you're trying to work with angles or sides, you should be very alarmed. So why is it okay that this one's negative? Because it's X. X. And when you, you plug, plug it in, equation, it just when you plug it in, it works out. As long as the sides themselves are not negative, the X can be. Just be careful with that. All right. Proof. Next proof. Yeah. All right. This is called. This is called the third angle uh, theorem. 
It basically says that if you have two triangles and you have two angles that are congruent here and the corresponding angles are congruent here, I can also say that the third angles are congruent. Here. So you can just make up the Alright, seems like common sense. So we're gonna go ahead and use a proof to show that. So how would I start? Should we put all the digits on one line? Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. Go ahead and put that. Put both those in there. All right. What do you guys think? A equals A B equals B. You have to show that B is equal to A. I'm trying to show that C and F are congruent. I hear, I heard the idea, but you guys are like talking over here. A B C A B C equals A. Angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180. That's really the only thing we know about triangles. Right. We don't know anything else about them except this. Right? Now what? Okay. Okay, same thing in the other triangle. Triangle sum theorem. No. Alright, and I again I got these because I really don't know anything else about the picture except the fact that they're triangles. And this is always true for triangles. Now what? You want to start from together? Yeah. The red line. Right a little bit smaller. Right? Since they're both equal to 180, they must be equal to each other. More substitution? Okay. Thoughts? Substitution again? So I know A and D are congruent, right? So what can I do? Not yet. I have to rewrite it. Okay, we're going to keep one of the equations the same and then the other one we're just going to swap them out. So instead of writing D, what could I write? A, because they're equal. And instead of writing E, what could I write? B. What allows me to do this? Alright, now okay, what would I do? Okay. So I can take A and B oops, out of this. Are we done? Right? Everybody see how I did that? Wow! Why did you put that extra part? Wow. That was me trying to drag it through. No, like that. Don't worry about it. I mean, if you want, I give it on piece of the pie. Okay, so this question is an illustration of the third angle theorem. So I want you guys to go ahead and see if you can solve for it. Uh, I'm going to solve for X. I tried 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 to solve for X. Let's see. 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 Let's see.
last question on the previous page, but the directions are different, so you approach it differently. All right? This one doesn't say that the full triangles are congruent. You guys notice that? It doesn't say that the full triangles are congruent. It just gives you two triangles and says solve right. All right? What I do know, what I do know is that these two angles are congruent. All right? So if I have 87 out and I have 22 here, what would this angle be? What would this angle be? 71. 70, 1, 1. Okay. So then I can use 71 instead of equal to this one, right? Or if you wanted to, you could also transfer the information to this triangle. You take the 87 and move it here. You can take the 22 and move it there. According to this theorem, this 20, or sorry, this angle should also be 22. Because if the two angles are congruent, then the third one will be. Either strategy you should get. Okay? Is everybody clear on the isosceles and the congruency stuff? Yes. 